All right, continuing it on. Continuing on. I can't say that word. <clears throat> I was going to do this last night. I got sleepy sleepy, so I went sleepy sleepy. I read earlier last night, but here we are. Arnold in Total Recall. A movie I've wanted to talk about for a long time. But look at that 4K slip. Man. I, of course, watched some Blu-ray because I don't have a 4K player or TV, but... Man. So... First and foremost, the score by Yi Yi, I forgot. Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah. Didn't say on that, but by Jerry Goldsmith is fantastic. And it sounds great coming out of the TV. I mean, it's fantastic. The special effects by Rob Bottin, still good. I mean, you could do. There's some like um, stop motion. You can still tell, but it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was. Take uh, Clash of the Titans, the stop motion in that was terrible. And mind you, it's because they combined stop motion with blue screen or green screen, whatever, and it looked horrible. Here, there are some. Green screen, blue screen shots don't look so good, but it's not like overly noticeable. Like, oh my god, it looks terrible. No, all the special effects in this movie, for the most part, are still spectacular. This is directed by Paul Verhoeven, who also did Robocop. And these effects look better than Robocop. I'm sorry, they do. You know? And as such, he brought on Ronnie Cox, who was also in Robocop. So, there's that. But the story here is that Douglas Quaid is your typical, normal construction worker guy who dreams of having a bigger, better life. More specifically, going to Mars. And when he brings this subject up to his wife, played by Sharon Stone, she shoots him down, saying, we don't need all of that. We'll find where we are. And uh, so then he sees an ad for a place called Recall. Or they can implant memories of you being on anywhere you want. So he decides to go there and he gets the special offer thing of going to Mars and being a secret agent. And he even picks out a woman that fits the woman that was in his dream. And they... I get it. He's going to pick out Brunette. But they actually show Rachel Ticketon. On the the screen, I'm like, no, that doesn't. I know it's to you know add to the effect because the big thing, and I'll discuss it in the end because I have opinions. The whole big thing with this film, they leave it very ambiguous as to whether or not everything in this film actually happened the way it should have, the way that it does happen. Like, did it happen at all, or was it in his head? Is he still a recall? Is he lobotomized? Who knows? And I'll discuss at the end. But he put in the machine. He starts freaking out, yelling, "You blew my cover!" And yeah, then they erase his memory and shove him in a Johnny cab. Now, um. Couple of things. One, this is based on a book by Philip K. Dick called We'll Remember It For You Wholesale. And two, everything from this point is Cohagen's fault. Or more specifically, Harry's fault. Because Harry, his friend, is the one that told him not to go to recall because of the his friend got lobotomized. But then when he's going home, Harry is there. With a bunch of thugs. It's revealed Harry is working for Cohagen. And he attacks him. And then he's going to kill him. But, you know, Arnold being Arnold, he beats up and kills everyone and runs up the stairs. Now, am I the only one that sees that if Harry had just, you know, decided not to be an asshole here, everything would have went fine? Because... Quaid had no idea he was even at 
recall. He woke up in a Johnny cab. That's all he knows. I think they even took out the, uh, the memory of recall. So that doesn't mean he wouldn't have seen another ad and, and went there anyway. But I don't know. It just seems to me like if, if Harry had just stayed distance and watched him from a distance and not interfered, I think it would have worked out better. I think he just went upstairs, watched him. He's not acting any different, you know. I think he's fine. But no, we got to progress this plot. And even when you want to factor in what we find out later, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, you know, like, a lot of this, I guess, I don't know. Going to recall triggered something and they had to act out this sooner I really don't know the point of all this but we'll get to it so garbage shoot uh, he goes upstairs he tells his wife he is Harry tried to kill me but I killed them and people after me and it's revealed she's one of them and she's not really his wife she was just sent there and it's hinted that she's actually Richter's wife Richter played by Michael Ironside, his wife, I guess. Uh, why would you volunteer your wife to be someone else's wife? Who knows how long it would be? I mean, she was fucking him, obviously. <laughs> so, you know, he's like, yeah, you can use my wife. Can you imagine that meeting? We need someone to infiltrate and be... To, uh, to watch over Quaid. Oh, my wife can do it, sir. Mm. You do realize that she's going to be his wife and will just have to perform those marital acts. So obviously she was having sex with Quaid, which it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, so if you're a woman, why wouldn't you? I don't know. I just think the added on bonus of her being... Richter's wife just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why would you let your wife have sex with Arnold Schwarzenegger? No knock knock. But, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, shootout happens, and he gets away, and he. Fine, he has like a briefcase that is left for him by someone. He, uh. Someone knocking on there. Not my door, though. And, um. So he goes to a secret place and he finds out he has that thing implanted in his nose. And in fact, I thought this fact was going to look terrible. But it still looked pretty good when he's taking it out. I have a hard time watching that. It's just oof. You imagine having a pulse on your nose like that. I mean, I I get easy nosebleeds, especially in the winter time when it's dry. Jeez. So I'm afraid to get a COVID test. I'm afraid they're gonna shove it up there and then bless it. Oh my god, what am I do? <clears throat> I get easy nosebleeds, but yeah, that was uh, that oof. But yeah, and he puts it in a little chocolate thing for the uh, rats to move around and they get distracted as he leaves. And uh, uh, they're so fucking stupid. They're shooting at nothing. And then Richter realizes after they shoot about a million times, wait, this isn't, doesn't make any sense. And yeah. So he gets his Astomaz. He finds out that he's actually Hauser. Who is a secret agent, and he needs to get his ass to Mars, so that he can connect with someone, and the rebel leader Quato. Now, we're led to believe at the beginning of this. I think there were script changes, because at the beginning of this, we're led to believe he was a, working with the rebels, and he had his mind wiped. But the Cohagen wiped his mind, so that he couldn't. 
help the rebels and he just banished them to Earth. But later we find out differently. He gets to Mars and we get that two weeks with the lady and the... I don't know. I never really cared for that scene, but... You know, there's a surprise and an explosion. Why is the lady talking when Arnold's head is not in her? That came out wrong. When Arnold's not wearing the lady mask, how is she talking? It just doesn't make any sense to me. He had a hard time saying anything but two weeks, but now this lady is automatically talking. And here's something that I, that I think of till I was watching this. On Earth, the cabs are all automated by these Johnny drivers, robot drivers, right? So why are there real drivers on Mars? Other than we need to have the Benning character for later, which is another problem I have with this movie, but yeah. And he takes a cab to the Hilton, which apparently there's a Hilton on Mars, I don't know. And he has a safety deposit box, tell him to go to a strip club, which he goes, and he takes Benny this time, and he goes in. We get the three boobied women, and yes, those are fake. For those people say, no, they were real. They're not real. Look, you could tell they're fake. And you could tell they're like rubber or whatever. They're not. No. I know there are some females with three breasts, but in this particular person, it was fake. She just died there anyway, but yes. And we get the line Oh, you're brave showing your face around. You had a lot of nerves showing your face around here, Hauser. And he. Because it's a mutant, he's like, who was talking? Now, I have a question. It says that uh, air leaking caused the mutations, right? So, why later, when the airlocks are put open, like, first of all, Richter is a fucking idiot. He comes in there, he sees... Sees Quaid, he starts shooting in a pressurized area. How fucking stupid do you have to be? I mean, he starts shooting, of course he puts a hole in the thing, the whole thing breaks open and gets sucked in, so why aren't people changing into mittens? And how are people still breathing? Like, people, they're just trying to not get sucked out, but we find out later that there's no atmosphere on Mars. We find out, you know, we, from the beginning, there's no atmosphere on Mars. So as soon as I think it's open, people are going, uh, 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 but they're not. And then it should close down, everyone's fine. Just a little air, brush it off. No, they shouldn't have been able to breathe. It makes no sense. And it happens again later, too, during the finale, during the final part of this film, where another one's been shot out, and they're still just holding on to the thing, but they can still breathe. It's not tell Ronnie Cox flies out, and he's going. To... <clears throat> Why does it take till he lands outside for it to do that? As soon as the thing is open, that's when it's exposed, and the Mars air comes through. Like if I open a window, the cold air is going to come through right away. It's not going to take its time. It's not going to be like, it's going to wait until I go outside for the cold, for it to be cold. You know? It doesn't make much sense. But, yeah, so he finds Melina. And Melina, I guess, is also, is working with Coato and Hauser and, of course, Quaid doesn't remember anything. And, uh, yeah, and he tries to get her to work with him, but she won't. So he goes back to his hotel room. And this is where we get the first scene where they tried to convince us of something else. You have the guy from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey that was, whoa, donuts, the whoa donuts guy, that's the guy. And he shows up, he's the guy from the ads for Recall, and he's telling Quaid that he's actually still strapped in the chair at Recall, and that this is all just a bad trip, and that his mind is making this stuff up, and he's not actually in any danger, which 
the first time I saw saw this, I'm like, oh, shit, really? Like, is that what it is? Like, how's this movie gonna end, though? If they shouldn't they, some, shouldn't they put this in the end, then? But it ends up being fake. And uh, I've heard people ask, how does a drip of sweat coming down have anything to do with it being real? Well, here's the thing. Quaid threatens his life. And as he's taking the pill, a brow of sweat comes down, right? On the Wall Donuts guy's face. Indicating that everything is actually real. He spits out the red pill, which I think the Matrix ripped this off. Red pill, blue pill. You, drink, you take the red pill, you find out what reality is. Yeah, they ripped this off. But, um... But yeah, and um, so that's when he goes nuts. He even brings his wife in. But to be fair, if you were questioning whether this was real or not, Sharon Stone's performance in this scene completely ruins it. The ambiguity is hanging out because Sharon Stone is acting like, like the way she emotes, she acts like she's an evil person. So there's no ambiguity here. It's like, because I'm watching this, I'm watching her talk, and I'm like, no, she's acting like she's evil. There, no, there's no, no, there's no ambiguity here because from the way that Sharon Stone is acting here, you can tell she works, for, she really does work for the bad guys, and none of this they're saying is true. So he kills the Woe Donuts guy. And then Melina shows up, there's a shootout, and we get the, uh, honey, we're married. Consider the divorce line, and uh, then they run off. Uh, and Benny saves them, and they make it to Cuato. And I find out Cuato is this mutant thing on this other guy's body. Goes through his mind, we find out that the pyramid thing they've showed before, if they activate it, it's going to destroy Mars, apparently, which it doesn't. I guess that's just what Ronnie Cox believes, or Cohagen believes. I don't know. The one thing I have a problem with, though, is that this is supposed to be a memory, right? So why isn't Arnold in the scene? It, we just see the rest of them talking. Now... Not to talk about the remake, but in the remake, Hauser had a different face. If that was the way they did it here, it would make sense. But we don't see Arnold in the scene, so how does Arnold remember this if he wasn't there? It just, you know, how did Quaid remember if he wasn't there? It doesn't make any sense to me, but <clears throat> who knows? Actually, also in the book, his name was Quail. People still shutting doors. But, uh, yeah. And then... The rebel, the Cohagen and his men show up. All hell breaks loose, and then Benny kills Quato. Again, this feels like a rewrite. It feels like they didn't want too many characters towards the end of the film, so they had to figure out a way for Benny to die, other than just having Cohagen's men kill him, which would have made more sense because he's going around bragging that he's got five children at home. I think killing him off. As a good guy, as a comic relief. Also, he's black, so... Especially in back then, at this point. Those characters didn't survive these kind of movies, but... I feel like making him a bad guy... And also later it's revealed he was in on it the entire time... Just doesn't work for me. This one, you see a scene where he... Like, he steals the cab, and I, I thought... Because I... I watched this before, but it's like, oh, was that cab driver guy hired to take him the entire time? But no, then they just revealed by Cohagen that Benny was in that the entire time. And I'm just like, well, then why wasn't Benny the one that picked him up then? And even that reveal, which we'll get to, Benny kills Cuado. And then he, because he revealed earlier he's a mutant. He's like, well, I got four kids to watch. And what happened to the fifth one? Oh, shit, you got me, man. I ain't even married. First of all, you don't have to be married to have kids. I know this was back in 1990 when, you know, the society was. You have, you get married, you have kids. But I'm not married. 
and I have a son, so you don't need to be married to have kids. Okay? Then having Benny become one of the villains, just, well, we get a cool line when he dies. I just, I don't know. I never liked that. I think he should, he, I think he should have been the comedic relief and died a sympathetic death because you got five kids at home. Who knows? But, yeah. And then we get the reveal that Quaid, or Hauser, set up Quaid. Hauser was working with Cohagen the entire time. And they used Quaid to get him to Cueto. Now, I feel like, again, there were some rewrites. Because, well, that beginning of the film, like, when he gets to Mars and everything... He's being shot at, being, you know, they're trying to kill him. But there is a scene in which Cohagen tells Richter to stop trying to kill him. And that's supposed to start this, you know. Maybe they wrote it in there. Because it wasn't like in filming, in script writing. They wrote that in there. Like, oh, we got to tell him to stop. Because eventually it's going to be revealed that he's in on it. And I don't know. I've never liked that twist. That Quaid was actually working for Cohagen. Because it's something that Melina suggests earlier, and that should have just been it. Like, she's a little iffy on it to begin with, but that should have been it. I don't think he should have been in on it. Because to me, it feels like last minute script writing to me. Like, they just, we need to have another twist. Benny's in on it. Because. Cohagen is in on it. Everyone's in on it. And it's just... And they're going to implant Hauser's memories back in. And that's another thing. It, when you separate the two, when you go, oh, well, Hauser was actually a bad guy. But then Quaid gets to continue living in this body that's not his. If Hauser was, in fact, a rebel then his memories could gradually come back and it wouldn't be a problem. But now you've established that Hauser was a bad guy. But now you got, got me thinking, well, then what happens to Hauser now? His memories are lost? I mean, this isn't Quaid's body. I don't know. Uh, but they're going to use the machines to... Bring House's memories back and also make Melina his woman. Glory's dead, so who knows. But, uh, you know, he gets out. That's a fucking asshole. He gets out, kills the people. Which, he pulls out this thing on the chair. Why would you have a big long spike under there that you just stab someone in the neck with? I don't know. And he gets, they get out and they make their way to Cohagen. He kills Richter. See what the party you leaked up. The severing his arms in the elevator, he gets up there, we get the hollow hologram from earlier. Ha 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 You think this is the real Quaid? It is. And then we get the showdown between Cohagen and Quaid and Melina. In which, once again, the atmosphere is shot out. They should have stopped breathing right away. But Ronnie Cox, or Cohagen, is thrown out as Quaid activates the machine. Now, Ronnie Cox is completely killed. But then, Melina and... I keep calling Ronnie Cox. Cohagen is completely killed, but... Melina and Quaid, they fly out. And they're going... But it takes fucking forever for the atmosphere. Because the thing comes down and it doesn't destroy the planet. It creates an atmosphere. But it takes forever. They would be dead. Before... And this is another thing that leads to... A possibility, but they would be dead before the atmosphere happened. And even then, they were already like halfway to being exploded headed like Cohagen. So it doesn't make any sense that as soon as the atmosphere works, it just it can breathe again. Also, the people at the strip club or whatever that were being decompressed with air, they're still alive somehow. But then all the windows burst open. And they're still alive as the atmosphere coming comes through. They start to kind of get sucked too, but once the atmosphere goes, it stops. But, like, again, they should not be able to breathe. But 
The air comes along, we see blue skies on Mars. Quaid says, what if this is a dream? What if it's not real? And she's like, well, if it's a dream, you gotta kiss me now. And as they kiss, there's this blinding light. Movie ends. Now, the biggest question coming out of this film is, is it real or is it recall? There's certainly a lot of hints leaning both ways. And I've always felt that it was real. Because, well, I'll tell you my defense on why I thought it was real for the longest time. Because in my opinion, it wouldn't make sense for him to wake up at recall. Or, or he could have just been lobotomized afterwards. But to wake up at recall after all this and go home and have his normal life. Where in this, uh, in this fantasy that is now memories, mind you, Harry, his best friend and co-worker, was a spy. His wife was a spy. He's not just going to be able to go home and enjoy his life now if it was real. Or if it wasn't real, he wouldn't be able to go home and enjoy his life. He'd always look around her shoulder. Is Harry really bad? Is my wife really evil? What's going on, you know? And some can say, oh, well, this has to be all in his head because he saw the stuff on the news, which leaves, you know, he heard about Quato, he heard about Cohagen, he heard about the rebels. All that was in his head. And they say he was putting it together as they went along, right? And he, he made his wife and his best friend the bad guys because Harry gave him a bad look when he mentioned the recall. You could put that all together and say that it was all in his head. And it ends the way he wanted to. He gets he gets the girl that he created on the thing and they showed Rachel Tickerton's picture. He was a spy. He saved, he saved Mars. And they get blue skies on Mars, which is what he wanted. And it ends with a white fade out. All things considered, you could say it was recall. But, <clears throat> from a happier standpoint, I've always believed it was real. Like I said, for the reasons that I said, if it wasn't real, then it, one, it demeans the whole reason for the film. Like, if they had added on the scene where after the white comes in, he wakes up at recall and it was all a dream. Not only is he going to be paranoid of his entire life, anyone in his life, but also it undermines the entire film because none of it was actually real. And what we watched never actually happened within the confines of the film, so what was the point? So, in my opinion, it's real within the confines of the film, of course. So, yeah, I always thought it was real, so, yeah. And in the end, I may have little, little problems with this film, but overall... I'd have to say that when it comes to Total Recall, it can go to the moon, baby. It's a perfect film for me. Special effects, the action, the honest. One of Arnold's best films up there with T2 and Commando. T2 and Predator. Excuse me. Uh, Commando is good too, but it's not a perfect film. Those three films are perfect to me. But yeah. So what are your thoughts on Total Recall? Let me know in the comments below. So... Let's see. I think I have two more films left to do to equal 10 for this weekend. Because somehow it always ends up being 10. I try to do more, but I just can't. So next, we're going to... What's Action Stars next? What's the, what are the last two? Well, the next Action Star is Dolph Lundgren. And when you see what movie I have in mind for next one... <laughs> well, you're going to ask if I'm crazy. But you know what? It's my channel which means i have the power